Hi there! Today we are diving into something super exciting, crafting perfect laser photos. We will learn how to laser engrave photos and make them look amazing. Don't worry, it's not as hard as it sounds. We'll start by working on a wooden portrait together, step by step, so you can see exactly how the whole process works. After that, we'll also share some tips for laser engraving other types of photos and even how they work on different materials. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how to engrave photos onto wood and adapt the process for other materials quickly and efficiently. So without further ado, let's jump in. This tutorial uses X2 Creative Space 2.4.27 and it's great if you've already completed the XCS 101 basics. If not, check them out first to get started. If you need translations in more languages, you can turn on you to bottle translate feature by clicking the settings icon, selecting subtitle CC, and choosing auto translate with your preferred language. The quality of your engraving depends a lot on how well you prepare your image, about 80% to be exact. So how do you properly prepare your photos? First, engraving tends to lose some details, so your image resolution needs to be high enough. Use HD images, preferably at least 1000 by 1000 pixels, to keep as much detail as possible. To check this, right-click your image file, select Properties, and look for the dimensions. Next, if your photo has a busy background, it can mess with the subject and take longer to engrave. Removing the background not only saves time, but also makes the subject stand out more. In XCS, you can use Magic Wand feature on the edit to quickly remove the background. If there are minor details, you can use Eraser to remove them. Finally, low contrast can make your engraving look blurry or flat. Adjust the contrast so the light and dark areas are more defined. This helps bring out the details in the final engraving. You can also adjust it in XCS under the Adjust feature. You can also play around with the grayscale parameter to see the black, white, and the gray shades. This gives you a clearer idea of how the engraving will actually turn out. By following these steps, you will set yourself up for much better engraving results. When engraving, it's really important to set the right processing parameters. The combination of power and speed plays a big role in determining the quality of your engraving. So, how do you find the best settings for your material? We recommend users combine EasySet and Material Test Array to test material parameters effectively. Since we are using Basswood today, let's see how it works. First, open EasySet and look for Basswood in the EasySet library. Then, check out the recommended setting ranges provided by Xtool, and use the Material Test Array function to generate a material test table. Finally, process this table directly on the material you want to test. Of course, you can also feel free to extend the ranges of speed and power values. Once the processing is down, we can check out how each combination works and look for the parameter combination that gives us the best engraving quality while keeping the speed as fast as possible. This is especially important for photo engraving since it can take a lot of time. This time, we are using Basswood and found that this power and speed setting gives the best results at the fastest speed. We'll use this as our baseline testing parameter. If you're not familiar with this step, we recommend checking out our advanced course Master Laser Settings. In that video, we explain how to use these XCS materials test tools and again the best material settings step by step. To get a clearer and more efficient understanding of how parameter adjustments affect the engraving, we can also test a specific section of the image, especially the eye area. So why the eye area? Well, the eyes are the most detailed and expressive part of an image. So by testing this section, you can quickly see how different parameters affect the engraving and choose the most suitable settings. Here's how it works. In XCS, we draw a rectangle around the eye area to create a mask. Then, based on this cropped section, use the Material Test Array feature on the Application section and generate a test matrix using the parameters we've already narrowed down. After running the test, we found this combination that made the image look the most vivid and realistic. 
So we will use this power and speed values as the major settings for the full engraving. After completing the eye area test, we can further optimize the parameters to enhance the details. There are a few aspects to consider. First, bitmap modes. When the laser is engraving the images, the images are not engraved as grayscale directly. Instead, they are converted into black and white dot patterns. The density of these dots is what represents the light and the dark areas of the image. So, this conversion relies on something called the bitmap mode detouring algorithm. The specific algorithm you choose determines how the dots are distributed, which directly impacts the final engraving's appearance. In XCS, there are seven different detouring algorithms available, each designed to create a unique engraving effect. If you are not familiar with how bitmap mode works, no worries. We recommend sticking to the default grayscale mode for most projects. It's the easiest and works well in most cases. For those wanting more precise results, we've put together a handy cheat sheet that explains the best use cases for each mode. Feel free to screenshot it and use it as a quick reference. Next, lines per centimeters, or the density of lines per centimeter. This parameter affects the level of detail in your engraving. The higher the density, the higher the resolution of the image. However, keep in mind that increasing the density too much can significantly lengthen the engraving time, and on some materials, it may not make a noticeable difference. Now, let's move to bidirectional mode and a unidirectional mode. In bidirectional mode, the laser head engraves in both directions, which increases the speed. However, slight alignment errors can sometimes occur when switching directions. Unidirectional mode, on the other hand, processes in a single direction. While it's slower, this method avoids alignment issues entirely, producing consistent and precise results. Alright, here's what we got after all the testing. The best settings for this project are power at 55, speed at 160, lines per centimeter at 100, and the bitmap mode set to Jarvis using bidirectional engraving mode. Through our previous testings, we determined that these parameters gave us the most detailed and vivid results, while also keeping the engraving process efficient. Simple, right? Let's give it a try today! Since different photos have different content, the key point we pay attention to during editing and processing will also vary. Let's explore how to achieve the best results for landscapes, pets, metal, and acrylic design. Landscape photos. The key to engraving landscape photos is emphasizing the depth and the detail. By highlighting the contrast between the foreground, mid-ground, and background, you can create a more three-dimensional and a dynamic effect. It's best to use the highest resolution possible, as landscapes can often contain intricate details. You can also adjust the contrast and the brightness to emphasize the photo's depth. For bitmap modes like Jarvis are ideal, as their smooth dot patterns enhance gradients and light shadow transitions. Pet photos. For pet photos, it's similar to human portraits, but also highlighting the texture of their fur is very important. Since fur is delicate and the background can easily distract from the subject, it's important to reduce noise in the background using the edit feature. Also, we can emphasize their fur by adjusting the sharpness and the contrast of the photo using parameters under adjust. For metals, the key is to focus on sharp details and clear lines. Here's the important part. Engraving on metal works opposite to wood. The deeper the engraving, the lighter the color. So we need to invert the image first. Just use the adjust tool to sharpen, boost contrast, and flip the colors. Here's a quick look at the difference before and after adjustments. You can see the details are much clearer now. If your metal materials don't handle grayscale well, you can convert the designs to line art. This way, the laser only processes the lines, skipping any shading. And for line art, you don't need to invert photos. To create line art in XCS, start by converting your image to grayscale using the Adjust Invert feature, then apply a black and white filter to remove shading. Finally, trace the image using Trace, and add an outline using Offset so it turns out into a line art format. Now, the lines are sharp and ready for engraving.
Engraving on acrylic is similar. It's all about sharp details and clear lines, just like metal engraving. And you also need to invert the image before engraving. And we highly recommend you to use colored acrylic for better results since transparent acrylic depends a lot on your machine's precision and it can be harder to catch the best results. If you're working with a grayscale design and it's not engraving well, you can switch to line art instead. This skips shading and focuses only on the lines, making the engraving cleaner. Check out how clean, sharp, and perfect the results are. In today's lesson, you have learned the basics of photo engraving, how to prepare your images, adjust the settings, and work with different materials. Now, it's your turn to give it a try. Just use what you've learned to create your own engraving, and we are excited to see what you come up with. All right, let's jump into some common questions. Question number one, why should I use high quality images for engraving? Great question. When you are engraving, some image details can get lost in the process. Starting with a high quality image helps keep more of these details, so your engraving turns out sharper and more detailed. It's a simple trick for better results. Question number two, how do I choose the right bitmap mode? Ah, uh, the bitmap mode. This depends on the type of image you're working with. The rule of thumb is to go with the default settings, grayscale. But also, if you've got photos with smooth gradients or lots of fine details, go for Jarvis or Stucky. If your design is more about bold black and white contrast, try Floyd or Atkinson. Need some help deciding? Just check out the cheat sheet we share in the course. It's your go-to guide. 3. What is a test matrix and why should I use it? A test matrix is a grid that tests different combinations of speed and power on your own material. Why is it important? Every material reacts differently to laser engraving. For example, higher power might burn darker on wood but could damage accurately. The test matrix lets you see how these settings affect your material so you can find the perfect balance for your project. It might take a little extra time up front, but it saves you from mistakes and ensures your final result looks great. You can also check out our material settings course, which provides you with a universal material setting formula that can help you achieve the best results efficiently. Question number four, what if my image has a complicated background? Complex backgrounds can distract from the main subject. To fix this, you can use software to remove the background or reduce its brightness. This will make the main subject stand out. Question number five, why test the engraving on the eye area? The eyes are one of the most detailed and expressive parts of a photo. Testing here gives you a quick way to see how well your engraving captures the fine details like contrast, texture, and sharpness. If the eyes look good, the rest of the engravings is likely to turn out well too. It's like a shortcut to checking if your parameters are set correctly. Last question, why simplify images for engraving on metal or acrylic? Metal and acrylic don't handle gradients well because lasers can create smooth transitions on some of these materials. Instead, they are better at producing sharp black and white contrasts. Simplifying your image removes unnecessary details and focuses on the most important parts like outlines and bold features. This ensures the engraving looks clean and sharp, even on materials where subtle details would otherwise get lost. Alright, this wraps up the Q&A. We hope this clears up your question. If you have more, feel free to reach out. Now, let's get started on creating your masterpiece today.